It's the three wise men from WOS and gentlemen, how are we today? <laughs> That's a great bringing right into it. Yeah. Yeah, it's all, wow, dynamite drop in right Danny. It, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm doing well, Dave. <laughs> Danny Holbrook, Nate Garlock, Miles Holiday, and our special guest tonight, Nick Fraley, Operations Manager for WOSN. Nick, thanks for coming on the show. That's no problem. I know I'm your backup, but that's, that, it doesn't. It does not hurt. You're not. Okay. You're never our backup, Nick. Does, you're always number it, one it, in our hearts. It doesn't hurt. I, yeah. I think what Danny is okay. trying to say is thanks for letting us have the show. <laughs> right. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Nick, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you coming on the show, and and let's talk about the upcoming schedule for WOSN. We've got so much going on with football and basketball and girls basketball. So lots of things going on. Well, we got at least two weeks of football left. This week, next week, we got the news earlier this week that our two, our four matchups tonight are going to result in two matchups next week. The winner of Marion Local Minster is going to play the winner of Duff St. John's Grove, and Anna Coldwater's winner is going to play Bluffton, uh, Patrick Henry's winner. So we got at least two games next week. So football's kind of winding down, and basketball's starting up, and it's a pretty stressful time because basketball just starts. It's not, there's no build up to it. It's just mm. tip off first week into the year, and we're going. So. It's, it gets pretty hectic. These last two weeks have kind of been our soft vacation. Uh, and then, yeah, next week it's uh, drive all the way until the end of March and then into spring sports. What's the uh, basketball coverage start like? What's that look like for next week? We start with our tip-off, Elida, Bath, Shawnee, LCC. I think that's typically how we start off every single basketball year. It's always a great event. You always kind of get a taste for what basketball is going to be like in Lima from that event. So, You know, it, it, the – difference in football season and basketball season here at the station it's night and day football season you guys are working everything for friday sometimes saturday games two days a week having to organize and you know there's some other fall sports going on basketball season though it's almost every night of the week there seems to be a game trying to juggle the schedule you know get people to to all these games figure out which ones we're going to go to things change so quickly especially with weather because of the winter and all the things that's going on you know basketball is just its own different kind of animal isn't it yeah basketball is a little little crazier because there are bigger weather concerns we're going to possibly have snow already this weekend so uh, and teams are allowed to cancel and reschedule games at will they don't there's no problem like football where it's like gosh I guess we play it Saturday and hope hope we get it in then so yeah there's a lot going on and shifts over the years where now kind of coaches are working with ADs to pick schedules and some of those coaches aren't picking games until early November sometimes so we're kind of, we just added a few more games from this last uh, well, this last week from games that were just added in the last few weeks. So it's, it's kind of crazy. Nick, can you talk about, like, uh, for the listener who doesn't really know the operations here, we know that the, the work that goes into putting a game on television and, and just the fact that we get all our stuff sent to us from WSN, the, the AD sends stuff to here, and then you guys putting out crews and cameras. And what's a typical day like on starting on Friday morning? On Friday morning, I get in. Typically, we'll have a Thursday night game of some sort, whether in fall it's a soccer, volleyball, or even a football game sometimes. Friday morning, I come in, make sure that all went through okay, and then I start looking at our ads and clients for those Friday night games, get that situated, send out my last emails to my sales team, make sure everything's go and all that, and then I start making some of those ad spots for, for those games. And then I've got to make our documentation so you guys at the games know who are the clients and all that. And then by like four o'clock, I'm burnt and I go home <laughs> and I go home and take a nap and eat dinner and I come back and games are start, like about ready to start. So, All right. We always get the question, especially during basketball season. Hey, why aren't you doing this game? Hey, are you guys going to be doing that game? Tell everybody, how do <laughs> games get picked? So maybe we don't get that question. So we pick, well, typically basketball was picked with our football games in the past. That starts like in June. Now we've waited kind of an extra month in July to pick basketball and start sorting that out. But uh, it's me, Mark Shine, Ryan Shadwell, who are like my two main guys who help me sort out stuff. Mark knows everything that's going on locally sports, right. and Ryan's also very tight into everything. So Ryan is, Ryan is like, I think he has a master's degree in uh, sports information, like director of stuff. So he's very on top uh, of all that stuff. So we pick the games. Uh, with our sales team. Uh, so we sort out with them what games are viable for us to do, what games have interest. And typically, if there's like teams that are really good, like Lima Senior is going to be really good this year, Shawnee is going to be really good this year, we try to we, like wedge those into the, the schedule a little bit more. But we do try to get as many teams as we can. Sometimes that's harder. Uh, there are like a million basketball games during the yeah, year. Right. It's so hard to get be everywhere all the time. Right. Uh, but we try our best to get at least one game a week that's two teams that we don't see too often. And then the rest are, uh, since we are a station in Lima, we kind of have a, 
a desire to cover those teams in linemen. So you're going to yeah. see a lot of Bath, Shawnee, Elida, Lima Senior LCC almost every week because that's a station of li- or you, a city of license. Do you have that flexibility? Like, let's say it gets to be February, and like, there's a team that really surprised you that you didn't have scheduled for a lot of games. Like, hey, maybe we should start covering them a little bit more. Uh, yeah, like that, that happened like during football this year. OG, uh, you know, Mark Shine was kind of banging the drum earlier in track season, saying, "Man, OG's got a lot of track athletes who are really good. They're probably going to be good at football this year." And you look at their last year's schedule and record, and like uh, they're not they they didn't they didn't perform very well. And then this year. They didn't have a great record, but they were still what six and or ended up being six and six. Huge which, improvement. Huge, over huge last year, improvement. Yeah, and they were yeah. a pretty solid team. They 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 showed really good sign stuff. So we 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 see those games. We get through like maybe week five and see, hey, this game up here that is not going to be a great game. One team we overestimated, one team we underestimated. It's going to be a blowout. Let's slot another team in, and that's like uh, we did that with I think uh, St. Mary's Bath at the end of the year. Two teams like Bath was the same. Uh, we didn't think Bath would be as good as they were. They were pretty solid this year. So we slotted into that game. Are Mark and Ryan, are they allowed to be bribed? <laughs> Could be. Well, right? yeah. uh, they, they, Mark, especially with coffee, you, you, right? You, buy, you buying a lot of dinners here lately, Dan? Is that what that weird. is? Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> uh, weird assignments. They're, Mark and Ryan are both bath people. Uh-huh. And, you know, Ryan does – it kind of comes through a little bit. Like, Ryan would want us to do every single girls' uh, basketball game because he does oh, stats for the girls' basketball. Yeah. And, you know, they're pretty good, so yeah. it never hurts, but – no, they, they, they want to see good games. I, I am more of the financial side. I have to make decisions that kind of keep the lights on, keep things rolling. They are my voice for what will be actual good games, who are teams we need to cover. Because I've got so much stuff going on that I can't really be on top of all the kids and who's good. I know some who are like really good, but they, they cover all that for me. They just want to see really good games, and I try to work that into a schedule that makes sense for us financially and – keeps things going. Nick, the change in high school basketball this year with the state finals being a two-day event and only the state finals being in UD Arena, now WSN can cover the state semifinals. Am I correct on that? Uh, that is what we've been told. I, I believe that's still true. I think they're kind of locking in some locations for that. And it's I don't want to say they're making it up as they go, but they, <laughs> they are. <laughs> they're they're like, yeah, up as they go. They, they <laughs> sort of are just – they have a plan, they have a vision, and they got to, you know – patch it together like last second a lot of times so. yeah so Danny just talked about you know the state semis and WSM potentially being able to to broadcast those one of the other questions that we get a lot especially at the end of football season and as we hit the end of basketball season is well, why aren't you guys broadcasting the state championship games you know what is it can you explain to everybody why that's not something that we that's typically carry question. spectrum spins to be the only people that can do tv broadcasts or online broadcasts of those games we'd love to be there we'd be there in a heartbeat even if we could just record Record it and air it later, but they pay a lot of money for that, and the state needs that. The, the OHSA needs that money to keep things going on their end. So, well, what if Nate and Miles and I gave up our one point five million dollar contracts back to WSN for one plus year, plus the bribe yeah, money that Mark bribe and money. Bri- yeah, Ryan can we do that? Yeah. yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> No more helicopter rides to our games. So part of what I said about the contract is false, all right? <laughs> so when you guys call a school, let's just say you pick a, a, a Lima senior. You, you, when do you typically get a hold of them? What goes into the decision the school says, yeah, you guys come broadcast our game, but here's what WSN needs to come broadcast? Sure, Lima Senior is a great one because Lima Senior has a uh, AV program at their school. They, they shoot their own games, kind of in the style that we do. So uh, we pick our schedule in, let's say, July – as we get closer to basketball season, Mark Shine will print out a document that says, here you go, John Zell, here are the games we'd like to do. John Zell looks at it and says, all right, I'm going to have a lot of media. At the, like OG, I, I don't know if OG plays at Lima Senior this year, but that's always a crazy game whenever they play any one of those. They're going to say, okay, do we have space? And then if they have enough space, we'll send our VMix crew that has a director and two camera people to announce it, all that. And if he doesn't have space, we'll send Jacob O'Neill as our single camera guy and make it work out. We have to fit in where we can fit in and make it work for the schools. We, we always hear people, I'll, I'm just speaking for you guys, because I know you probably hear it too. People will stop you in the crowd. Love what you guys do. Yeah, Thank you for, for doing it. What are some positive things that you hear from people when they, they, they reach out to you, tell you about uh, WOSN? Uh, typically, it's older older folks who don't have the physical means to go to games anymore, and WSN is the one way they can watch it, right? They don't have they don't have spectrum, they don't have cable, they have over the air TV, and that's how they watch their grandkids play, uh, and that means a lot. And and sometimes you know it, it it's a hard media is hard. It, it does not pay enough. There are a lot of naysayers, a lot of people who hate for seemingly no reason. 
So it really is nice every now and then you get those nice messages like, hey, thank you for doing this. I can't watch Billy play because I can't go to the game. It means a lot that you guys do these games. Yeah. And well, it kind of helps you get through the – because you, I mean, you guys get online hate and hate in person. Mm-hmm. And stuff like Danny that. gets tough. a lot of it. I do yeah. from my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, based off the feedback that we get when we go places – when we don't broadcast something or it's a light week or whatever, we get well, we hear, hear from a lot of people, hey, why, why aren't, aren't you guys, guys there? there? I'd yeah. love to have that game. People want to want WOSN around, and I think that it really exploded, at least in my opinion from being around the station, you know, I think eight or nine years at this point, was COVID. When COVID happened, it kind of changed the direction of a lot of things because people weren't traveling as much, gyms were empty, all, all these things going on. I mean, do you see that too? Do you, you, you know how COVID kind of impacted things moving forward? COVID has completely changed how video works for high school sports. Everyone got an NFHS cam in their gym that year and quickly found out that NFHS wasn't really giving them a great deal on what they were buying. And then now everyone's on huddle. And some schools, like I know Marion Local does a pretty solid uh, huddle broadcast. They have announcers for their football games, stuff like that. Other schools have done, like uh, when Grove was going through that, they had a really nice program they put together for their basketball. Uh, But other schools, it's just like a camera that sort of follows the play. Uh, But at some point, those cameras are going to get really good. And at some point, people are going to realize, hey, if I pay two guys who just like the sports to, to broadcast, even not great, they'll get better over time. It really improves broadcast. So COVID changed a lot. And we did get a lot of uh, nice comments like, hey, thank you for doing this stuff. But ultimately, that is kind of maybe the beginning of the end for a smaller folks who do sports stuff. Now, there's always going to be like uh, Ken Rickers, a guy we work with uh, up in the Bryan area, guys like that who can come in, do a really quick, uh, affordable broadcast and come in and do stuff. But ultimately, like these bigger players are going to kind of be pushed out at some point because robo cameras can kind of just do stuff. Why is Spectrum paying you know, millions of dollars to do these games when they can slowly just be pushed out by the HSA who can just use a RoboCam to pay for all their stuff. So and, AI yeah. is going to be a big part of broadcast moving forward, do you think? Um, not in like a positive way, like in a, <laughs> in a, in a way to yeah, cut this, out. This like, question really kind of uh, took, yeah. took a turn a, I didn't expect it to. <laughs> like, I think you announcers are safe for now, you know. Uh, but I, I think camera people, like, I have seen some of the – like, because, I mean, we get stuff all the time from, right. like, broadcasting association stuff. Some of these RoboCams are getting really good. The, the ones we're seeing now are, like, recycled, like, security cameras. Who They're just like, wow, I have this $40,000 security camera that, that doesn't really do much. Let's just sell it to high schools, and they can track basketball and volleyball games. Uh, but they're getting really good, and that will kind of change how we do stuff in the future. But So the, what I've seen with that in that realm is – so I, I, the huddle, I think it's called like huddle focus, and it's that camera that huddle has that kind of tries to track yes, and stuff. Yeah. It's not good. It, it, yeah. it, it basically follows where the large group is, but it's lags. So, yeah. you know, a lot of times I, I was watching it, um, Shawnee's Boys Soccer, the um, state um, semifinal game. It was on, it was, oh, we have a live stream. Everybody's super excited. Well, the NFHS stream didn't work, so they go to Huddle Focus. I'm watching it on that. I had to pay another $10 to watch that stream. And then I never, I missed a bunch of stuff because it lags and it doesn't get there. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think what people hear live stream and they, they get excited about these things and they want to watch it, but they're, they're definitely, right now at least, sacrificing some quality where, you know, I think that's where as a station, we really excel is, you know, our, our camera people are uh, amazing. They do great work. Ken does great work. All, all these things that we get to see. Um, and, and it's just such a better high quality thing. And then with the YouTube stuff about a week later, people get to continue to, yeah. to watch these things and experience these. I can tell you, I mean, you know, we've talked about it on this uh, podcast before, but you know, I, I mean, I mean, obviously I had a lot of big dad moments this year with my son and you know he has clips on youtube now he gets to watch those things we get to relive those things you know on a dime where you know live stream it it comes and then it goes and then you're done with it and i think that's where wsn's really standing out above all these other other things yeah I, i think our value is not in live i i have very mixed feeling as somebody who does broadcasting for a living and live sports being very important I don't see our value there. Our value is having high-quality broadcasts that you can watch after the fact. You, it mm-hmm. is for the fans. It is for the people who are going to go to Minster Marion local Friday night, come home, and immediately be like, all right, what other games happened? What happened in Anna Coldwater? Uh, and for me personally, 
high school sports is all about the live experience. We, we don't have enough money to buy the cameras and equipment and pay for everybody to make broadcast so good that they replace what going to the game is like. Right. I briefly was at the at OG for the Lipsick uh, Delphi St. John's game the other night. And crazy atmosphere. Both both towns showed up huge for that game. You cannot replicate that sitting at home. And that's like kind of the unique thing about high school sports mm-hmm. is I don't go to Bengals games too much. I love the Bengals. Don't go to Bengals games because I have to leave at 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. I don't get home until 8 p.m. And I've spent $500. And it was yeah. cold, and I saw a <laughs> way and worse version. Yeah, I watched a way, yeah, and I watched from the 300 level, so a way worse version of just sitting at home. Right. There will never be enough money in high school sports to replicate that experience. So our job has to be uh, to collaborate with schools and be cooperative to to make the best experience uh, post game. Right. Is is a station for the fans who just love sports so much that they, they're going to go to their game, get home at 10 p.m., immediately flip on the next game and watch that. Yeah, you said that you get people that will complain. Uh, so I, I, my question to you is give me one good comment that someone has told, with, told you over the years that's really stuck with you, and give me the, the best, the funniest complaint that you've ever had. I, th- I can't remember her name. It is a, it's a grandma who, who lives in Florida for OG grandma. And she got to watch essentially all of OG's run last year uh, through our app because she can do that. All right? And that is something we can connect people to, something they can't see. And that was just very, it was very long. It was very nice and very sweet. And some of the bad stuff, some of the bad stuff's like they'll, they won't even be talking about us. They'll be like, hey, you guys didn't cover this game. Your coverage of this game sucked. And I was like, who are you talking about? Like, <laughs> do you think we covered, like, St. Francis, like, uh, it's like St. Francis Fort Wayne's game? What do you <laughs> It's just people like that. People get so heated and will send, like, a three-paragraph message about how your coverage of this Detroit team versus Toledo team was awful. And I was like, that, we weren't at that game. I don't That's know. hilarious. <laughs> we had a, Gilly and I got sent to Ridgemont this year which was awesome. Ridgemont, typically we don't cover them a lot. They don't have a great sports program, but they had a really good football team this year. They finished 8-2. and two. When we showed up, you'd have thought ESPN was there. Those kids were going nuts. The coaching staff all come up and talk to Gilly and I. The parents and the fans were so happy we were there. That, to me... Man, that, that's what WSN is about. Look, like Marion Local Minster is a huge game, but those people love that moment yeah. just yeah. as much as Marion Local yeah. Minster. Mm-hmm. And the kids from Richmond, they won that game. It was a big time game against Waynesville that night. I, that, that's what I feel like we're about, you know? And the Ridgemont people were so welcome. It, they made a job easy. Like Nate said in the past, Danny Holbrook's coming to a NWCC game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they roll out the red carpet, the limo's there. Yeah, that's, that's why the, they met you that. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like, they're like, Danny. Yeah. And, then, yeah. who's, and then you, anytime we bring Gilly yeah, anywhere, like, I mean, we, you're, drawing, you're drawing a crowd. <laughs> did, did he have his chains on or did you already? <laughs> I took them off. They took the chains <laughs> off of him. Yeah. Right? I just sit here, pound on this drum and look oh, funny. Oh, poor Gilly. <laughs> You know, the upside of Gilly is I just pay him in like three rotisserie chickens every game instead of money. And it all, it's look, all good. Look, you know? Funny story. I've told this before. I'm going to tell it on the podcast. It's the best story ever. Gilly starts about three or four years ago. And I have a game with oh, him. Oh, this is good. I have a game with him. And we get a, a, a regional basketball game down in Vandalia Butler. And we're driving down there. And Gilly, it's me, Gilly, and Gilly, the girl he was dating at the time. She's driving us down to this game. And Gilly looks at me and he says, man, this is a fun job, isn't it? I go, yeah, he goes, I sure wish we got paid. And I said, what? And I said, Gilly, it's March. What do you mean we don't get paid? And he goes, you get paid? And I go, Gilly, I turn a timesheet in once a month. And he's like, should, should I be doing that? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, Gilly, you've been working all year for us, right? And he goes, yeah, I, I think they owe me some money. I'm like, yeah, I think they do too. <laughs> He's so gilly. It is. It is. Oh, it's man, you got to love him. That's right. Well, Nick, thanks for coming in, man. We appreciate it. Great and, job. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, keep uh, keep having us employed. <laughs> keep <laughs> assigning yeah, us games. Yeah, <laughs> please. <laughs> please. Nick Fraley from WSN. It's the Diamond Dave Bowen best thing we saw all week, and Miles, you and I saw a lot this weekend, did we not? <laughs> <laughs> we sure did. Um, I have three quick things for you guys. Um, number one, the guts and determination of uh, DSJ. Uh, absolutely impressive. Who would have thought week eight, week nine, even week 10, that this would be a team that would be three weeks into the playoffs. I was fortunate enough after the game, I was waiting around to get a post-game interview and Coach Schulte was uh, addressing his team. 
And I, it was awesome because he just looked at his guys and every guy was locked on him and he goes, this is just us. This is just what we do. You know, we're just tough. You know, everybody thinks that we have no chance all the time, but this is what we do. We find a way. They were down 13 nothing again uh, mm-hmm. against Lipsick and found a way to come back. So that was just a special moment. Danny, you and I, we got to uh, experience Buckeye fan at its best, right? That at was Wrigley awesome. Field, was awesome. 90% Ohio State fans. It was just uh, awesome. You felt like you're in Ohio, right? Yeah. Instead, instead of being in Chicago. And then the last one uh, from last night, Colin White, our guy. Yeah. Six points, yeah. right? Yeah, against, so good. Against Evansville, that was a lot of, a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, did you see him when he hit that second, or the, hit the first one, and he just was pumping his fist? And yeah. you could just see, like, like the weight of the world. Like, yeah. I can play at this level. Yes. Yeah. And I'm yeah. telling you, he's going to play at that level. How about Jake Diebler afterwards saying that Colin White's going to make a lot of shots in his career at Ohio yeah. State? Yes. Yeah. Nate, what about you? Uh, you know, for me, we, we spent a lot of time with the kids that we've brought in here talking about you know their futures and recruiting and what that all's been like and over the last couple of weeks things have seemed to really be ramping up we're seeing a lot of kids uh you know announce the offers they've gotten or where they're committing and all these other things and i got to experience that firsthand over the weekend uh with with my son uh we went down to game day visit down at mount st joe's for their conference championship game and got to be on the field, got to meet with the coaches, got to do all those things. And then when the game was over, he got his official offer from Mount St. Joe's and That's he, awesome. and he committed. Um, so that was a big moment for our family, getting to experience that, getting to watch him, you know, a big goal that he set for himself. And it, it's a, it's such a unique thing. We've talked about it a lot, recruiting in itself yep. and all these things. It's the only time in your life you're ever going to experience what that that is and and getting to kind of go through that and and see that with him and experience that as a dad is you know for somebody who's been around a lot of sports and seen a lot of kids do it and as a coach going through it with a lot of kids I mean I've taken a lot of kids on visits and I've sat a lot on signing days a lot of kids but it's just different when when it's your own so that that was yeah that was that was a family yeah it was it was a great thing for him really proud of him and what he had done and um you know, it's the a other really one, good program. It is. It's it's a really good program. Offensive minded. So as a yep. wide receiver, he he doesn't hate that. We got to watch them go four or five wide pretty much the whole game, throw the ball all over the place. Won their third straight HCAC conference championship. So a really good program. They've had coaches come in and out, but um, you know, Coach Hop has done a fantastic job. He's been around, I think since 07 well, when he was a college player. He said, I, wow. I came and I just didn't leave. And he's doing fantastic. All down coaches there. like tall receivers. Yep. Yeah, the transformation you're going to see in Michael in the next four to five years is going to be awesome. Uh, that's, be awesome. that's what we're hoping for. Yeah, we're going to speed a little bit as he, you know, he liked to throw his 40 time out here the last time he was here. <laughs> four nine. Yeah. 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 We try to we try to talk real loud over yeah, when yeah, he talks yeah. to us that second number, Don't but we'll, that, we'll get Michael. there. Don't we'll get there. That. Can you imagine yeah. the coaches like, Michael, what do you run? And he's like, oh, so uh, <laughs> where's the library? He yeah. runs fast. He's a cheetah. <laughs> so it was great. And then the other one, I know, you know, we spent most of our time talking about high school, maybe a little bit of college, but I, listen, I, we got to, it, it's over now. So w- w- I feel like we can talk about it. But that, and I, I don't want, me and you can talk about yeah, it. We're not yeah, going to yeah, talk yeah. to him about it. But that 15 and 0 start from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Oh, that was, that was fantastic. Amazing. It was a bad, it was, yeah. <laughs> Wait till it was, we, it was great. You know, we're one and one against him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's not like they're dominating us, right? right? Yeah. Well, you know, and if I'm a Celtics fan sitting back there thinking, oh, oh, it was so great. Yeah. We won 120 to 117. Yeah. You blew a 21 point second yeah, half lead. Right. All yeah. of a sudden, Darius Garland forgot that you're supposed to put the ball into the basket. He went three of 21, and, here's, and yeah, we yeah. still almost won that game. You're right. Feel real confident today, hey, Celtics I, fans. I would be bragging about the guy you hired as your facilities manager covering up the parquet. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that was ugly what floor, in the wasn't world? It? <laughs> ugly floor. <laughs> So in Boston, <laughs> in Boston, they hang banners for championships, not 15 and 0. We got starts. one a couple years ago. Don't, don't, well, hey, listen, yeah. that's fine. 15 and 0 has yet to mean <laughs> right. not a finals cha- or a finals uh, appearance. Why, why so. play the season? Let's just do it now. Agree. <laughs> we can just fast forward right to it. Put you guys, <laughs> as if we represent the Cavs, <laughs> we never talk NBA. Wait, you guys, you guys aren't their back I, 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 I saw his Facebook stuff, and I had to get it in. I had to get it in. Diamond. <laughs> Dave were texting me last night. He was running his job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guys, for me, it's uh, it's the three Ds, defense, depth, and discipline of the Marion local football team. I got to broadcast their game last week. 
I, I just I, I gush when I watch this team play. They swarm to the ball. They've allowed 36 total points this it's year. It's insane. It's insane. It? Yeah. They they average uh, three points a game defensively. I've it's never ridiculous. seen a high school team play like they do. And when I say play like they do, they play hard every single play. It's incredible. Uh, the quarterback, it was 40, <laughs> it was 48 to nothing at halftime. They take that their quarterback. Yeah, they take yeah. their quarterback out in the second half. He's in street clothes. We didn't know if he was hurt. He had a little limp, so I'm not real sure. We'll have to look at the details of if you know how hurt he was. So they bring in this senior quarterback and he's just flinging the ball like he's been doing it his whole life. And we look down the sideline and they've got a freshman standing down there at six foot four, 195 pounds. And one of the guys from Marion Local says, Yeah, we think he's gonna be pretty good. And he's you just throwing so. he's just throwing darts out there. And I'm like, where do they get these kids? Just rinse and repeat but down there. Here's the thing: they were so humble, like they win that game running away, and they walk off the field like Who's next? Yeah. yeah. And it's not a braggadocious thing. Yeah. It's not an arrogant thing. I've never in my life seen a program like this at any level. I mean, we've seen it at colleges and pros, but this is this is second and level stuff. There's something different about this team. Yes. There's, there's just something different. Yeah. About so, them. you know, and, and the discipline they play with, they, they're all assignment football. They never get caught out of position. They, it's, <laughs> you got to see it to believe it. And I'm fortunate enough that I get the Marion local Minster game this week, so I'm super excited Well, about sometimes that. when you you're play those teams, are, they're much better on you. You say, well, maybe we can even things up with a trick play. Don't waste your time because no. they, they don't fall for that stuff. No. They're so disciplined. No, they, I've never seen guys go to the ball like they do. And Sonia had 10, 12 negative plays before they had anything. Anything. Yeah. It was incre- and Ansonia is a team that had two backs that went for over twenty one hundred yards. It's I mean, all state backs, yeah. and they just destroyed them. It's mm-hmm. like watching those uh, movies where the one team's getting destroyed early in the game, and every play is like them getting a ten yard <laughs> loss. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Guys are just doing flips in the air, and they get in. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. It's week four of the high school football playoffs, and we've got some great matchups here on WSN. Game one: Delta St. John's, Columbus Grove at Lima Senior. Randy Roberts, our own Miles Holiday. Columbus Grove comes in 13-0. Delva St. John, 6-7. Guys, uh, Miles said it best a couple minutes ago. Who would have thought week three, four, five, six, Delva St. John's? But I'll tell you this. I had a guy tell me this. He said, we're going to, before the playoffs started, he said, we're going to play Columbus Grove in the regional finals. And I I laughed. I I laughed. I I laughed. And then he hit you. You know, yes. (laughs) Now now I have to look at that guy and go, I'm stupid. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Well, this has been an unbelievable run by DSJ, right? There's just no way around it. It's so impressive probable they have been buoyed by the fact that drew boggs is back uh he made so many plays with his feet last friday against lipsick um he would leave the game with a bad ankle find a way to work that ankle off on the sideline then get back in there make another play hurt the ankle again do the same thing over again then tj words have you guys ever seen the young man play he's really good very good he is a wrecking crew man it's it's words demolition and hauling because he will demolish <laughs> you and then he will haul that running game mueller and him just wore down lipstick in the second half and what always happens you know beginning of the game two yard runs seven yard runs in the second half nope. 12-yard runs because you wore down that Lipsick team. They were so impressive the way they blitzed and attacked that Lipsick team. But that being said, different animal, man. Yeah. yeah Columbus yeah. Grove, much different animal. I, 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 am, I am excited to see T.J. Wirtz go against Landon Houston at least one time because Houston, the great white shark, the linebacker for Columbus Grove, he's going to fill. Wirtz is going to lead on an ISO at one point in time, and those two are going to be in a hole, and, and the world just might explode <laughs> because of the force of those two guys hitting. It's going to be a fun game, but there's a reason why Trent Barraza had 287 yards last week and five TDs. I, I just think it's going to be too much Grove. Yeah, you know, when you talk about T.J. Wirtz, too, it was, what, six, seven weeks ago. I mean, yeah. They're talking mm-hmm. eight. ACL out for the season. They told me he's out forever. No, nobody yeah. thought we'd see him again, and now here we are. And, you know, they're playing in a regional final. You, you mentioned Boggs; he's been hurt all year. They get him back, so they got healthy at the right time. And you know, you can never, you know, ever count out Coach Schulte. He always has done great things. This, you know, they've won tournament games before when they've been yeah, lower yeah, seeds yeah. this is this is what they do but as you said it, it's a different animal with Columbus Grove it, it really is and you know I don't know that 
Yeah, I, I just don't know that this is a good matchup for Delphi St. John's. I would agree with you. I, I just don't know that they're going to be able to rely on some of the things that they do well to work again. I can tell you this much, too. They can't fall behind no. by two scores like no, they've done no, the, the entire score. playoffs. Yeah. That That's not going to work. It's been great because, as you mentioned, right, okay, they score quick, but we wear them down. Yep. We wear them down. Then they, now here's the holes. Now we strike. You cannot do that against Columbus Grove, or that game will be over before you get to halftime. You're not going to get enough possessions back because Trenton Barraza is going to rush the ball 30 that's times. That's a good yeah. point. And, and, you know, Lipsick small at the second level. The linebackers aren't huge, right? Yeah. You can wear them down. Uh, this Grove defense. It's very good. Big up front, great linebackers, Raiders, Schrader, and Houston. Who's got better linebackers than those guys, right? So I, I agree with Nate. I'm not sure you can wear them down to run the football like you need to. Yeah, I don't I – don't, look, Delphi St. John's has had a great run, and we're all super proud of them. But, again, this is next-level stuff. And, and if the truth be told, a lot of people in Northwest Ohio, they're waiting for that matchup. And you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Columbus Grove, Marion Local, we all think, we all think, that Columbus Grove can stand there physically not flinch at Marion Local. Now, do I think they can be uh, – that's to be seen, but this is what they've worked for all season long. I, but I, I do think that that's the one thing that maybe works in Delphi St. John's favor. And I think that's going ahead. to be Coach Sha- or Coach Schaefer's biggest test is to keep his team focused, focused. on the Blue Jays and not what awaits them the following week. Because if they get caught looking ahead at all, because oh we're playing a 15 seed, yeah they've made a good run, but yeah. look you know whatever well, the talking points happen. are going to yeah. be, it, you know they're high school kids, they know what's coming. There's been a lot of talk about it since week one. Film yeah. don't it, lie, it, it's still coming. Yeah. Yeah. But if you know St. John's can come out. And they can catch Columbus Grove off guard right away. And all of a sudden, Columbus Grove has to remember that we're in a fight here because they thought that this was going to be an easy walk to a regional championship. That might be what Delphi St. John's needs to pull off this upset. Yeah, the great coaches do not allow doubt to creep in the minds of their players. And I don't think Andy Schaefer's going to let any doubt creep into the minds of his kids. They've worked really hard this year. I think if there was a letdown, probably during the regular season, right? When, yeah. when you get to the playoffs, you think your focus is a little bit more. Keep in mind, too, I'm not sure DSJ wins that football game if Mark Kirkendall <coughs> is healthy at quarterback. Right. I mean, he's throwing – he threw two TDs with, with a broken finger on his yeah. throwing hand. Yeah, which he's had for five weeks. Which is which crazy. Which is incredible. Yeah. 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 yeah, I talked to Coach Kirkendall after the game. He said, yeah, he's probably going to have surgery on it next yeah. week. And there, yeah. And he still played. Well, there, and you said it best. There's a difference between getting down two scores to Upper Side of Valley, getting down two scores to Lipsy, getting down two scores to I think Tiffin Calvert the week, whatever it was. No, they weren't. That yeah, was the one they weren't down. But these yeah. are these are different animals. Yeah. So. All right, guys. Game number two, the big one we've all talked about. It's a rematch from earlier this year. Minster Marion Local at Wapakoneta. Myself and Darren Gilbert will be on the call. Minster comes in eleven and two. Marion Local obviously thirteen and zero undefeated. These guys played earlier this year a twenty one nothing win by Marion Local. Any chance Brogan Steffi and the boys pull this one out? I mean, I think that there's a chance, right? I mean, there's always it, a it, chance, right? It, it, I mean, Minster was pretty much their toughest 21 game. Nothing, yeah. 20, and it was a 21 nothing game. They obviously were able to slow down that Marion Local offense. They couldn't get any go on their own, which that just goes back to how d- tough that that Marion Local defense is, right? I mean, that to shut down the Minster offense and to not allow those guys to get going – uh, in any way, but you have a true dual threat quarterback for Minster and Brogan Staffy. So even if you shut down one, maybe he can get things going with his legs. Maybe those legs extend plays. Maybe now you can find somebody in, in that secondary somewhere. I think with him at quarterback, you still are always going to have a chance. That defense is going to have to find a way. My big, my big concern, and we've talked about this in other games. Uh, you know, I I thought this going into the Columbus Grove LCC game. I thought the biggest problem that LCC was going to face is that they showed Columbus Grove that they could be a threat. And I think that that is kind of the same issue going into this week That's a great point. where, you know, Minster showed Marion Local, hey, we can at we're least not roll over. Like, we're not yeah. going to roll over. We can find a way to slow you down. And we're only a couple of plays away from being in that one. And I don't know that I want to poke the bear that is Marion Local to be like, hey, we need to show them that they can't stay in this game. Yeah. So a lot of debate throughout the week. You brought it up earlier. Marion Locals quarterback Justin Knopf did not play the second half. Is yeah. in street clothes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Coach Goodwin turned in his starting lineup. It does have him in it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, have coaches maybe have done that in the past and the kid doesn't play? Sure, that happens, sure. right? Assistant coaches that I have talked to in the area have said that they have heard that Knopf is not playing this week that's for Marion heard. Local. Yes, that's what I've heard. So – if that is the case, I mean, this is a really good Marion local team. However, 
Now it changes everything that you do, right? He, he was so efficient for them all the time. Whenever they needed a big throw, he made that big throw. Do they turn into just a run team only now, Danny? Well, here's the thing. I, I think obviously your playbook's a little limited with a backup, not right. a lot. But here's the thing. Marion Local hangs their hat on that defense. Yeah, it absolutely. is the best we've yeah, you seen. You still got a score, right? You yeah, still got a score. Got a score. But I think what you do is you ball control offense. You keep Brogan Steffi off the field. Without you, a doubt. You run the ball like you typically do at Marion Local, and you tell your defense, look, we need something out of you guys, whether it's scoring, whether it's keeping them on the other side of the 50, but the defense is where you hang your hat. Yeah, and they've been good all year, right? And they're going to get you at least one or two turnovers. They are. That's exactly they're, right. Yeah. yeah. So Minster, very impressive last week. Guys, um, 168 yards and 134 yards passing, 168 rushing, 134 passing. In the first 16 minutes in that game against Cincinnati, I know it says prep school, Gosh, but, prep, yeah. Yeah, but it might be Cincinnati – prep preschool by that <laughs> score 42 nothing how do you allow that much and to me are you shocked at some of these lopsided scores that you see this late into the playoffs i not, mean not against max schools no right right maybe maybe that's it but broken steffi but you brought him up he's a great football player but i for them to win i think james niemeyer and broken steffi it can't just be broken steffi right yeah. both those guys got to show up and the defense led by ian homan and will frimmel those guys are gonna have to play lights out ian homan is a a really good football player. I had him earlier yes. this year. He's yes. a fantastic football player. Guys, I said it earlier when they played the first time. I thought Minster had a shot. I think they still have a shot if if things go their way. Now, we don't typically see Marion Local turn the ball over. We don't see him make mistakes. I said it earlier, discipline and desire. Quarterback, and, yeah. center exchange, Creep. maybe an issue if, if Nuff isn't playing. You know, that those are all things that creep in. Yeah, but you're, it's going to take things like that, though, to yeah. beat this Marion Odd Local things. team. Yes. Like, Marion Local is at a point right now where – they're getting the benefit of the doubt more often than not when it comes to pretty much everything on the football field, they including should. you know whether or not the, you know they're the favorites and they're going to win. You, but it feels like they're going to have to beat themselves. Well, how about this? And if you're going to have to rely on them to beat themselves, I wouldn't hold your breath. How about this? 30-degree temperatures and 25-mile-an-hour winds. That's they're, what we're predicting for Friday night. I don't think that bothers them yeah. even a little bit. No, yeah. no, 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 no. But no, I, you can no, tell no. the game's going to be played on the South Pole. Yeah, all right, what time? Yeah, no, no, that's <laughs> but fine. I'm saying it could, it could play a factor. You never know. So, Guys, game three, Patrick Henry takes on Bluffton. Nate Garlock and Evan the Pirate Skillet are on the call for this one. Patrick Henry comes in at 12-1. and one. Bluffton comes in at 11-2. Guys, I said on the radio show today that after Bluffton, and I'm trying to be kind here, got dismantled by Columbus Grove. And they had that hangover against Paulding in week one of the state playoffs. Yeah, 21-6. But, yeah, but since then, man alive, have they regrouped, really playing good football. Yeah, 117-28 to 28 on their opponents yeah. overall. Uh, and you're, that's impressive. But then you look at Patrick Henry, 94-11. to 11 in the playoffs. So both teams are really good. The one thing you got to know about Patrick Henry is that they are never going to be out coached. Bill Inselman, I don't know, he's been there since the beginning of football. I mean, one of the best guys at coaching football and one of the best guys you're ever going to talk to. It's a program. To. He is a yeah. fantastic guy, cares about the kids. He's the winningest coach ever in the Northwest Ohio Athletic League. They are fantastic. And, and if you don't know about Lincoln Krieger, their quarterback, Danny and I was fortunate to watch him. He, he carried really them good. against Columbus Grove earlier in this yeah. year. Over 1,000 yards rushing, over 1,000 yards passing, 27 TDs, and, and he's huge, isn't he? He's like 6'2", 210 pounds. Minnesota's interested in him and going to play. And Nate, he's a great safety, too. He flies up and hits. This uh, is a Patrick Henry team that loves to attack with Ben George as, as a defensive coordinator that brings blitzes. I just like Patrick Henry because they're a physical football team. Bluffton, I think, when they played a real physical football team against Columbus Grove, they didn't really pass that test. They had to pass that test this week. Well, you know, these teams have a common opponent, right, in Columbus Grove. Right. That Patrick Henry-Columbus Grove game was very close. That was Columbus Grove's toughest game this season. Now they come out and they win. Patrick Henry comes into this one with two losses. Their two losses have come to Columbus Grove, as we just mentioned, and Liberty Center – who's also undefeated and yeah, still playing. Yeah. They, they, they have played a, a really tough schedule. They're a really good team. The one area where, as, I'm, as I was getting ready for, for this game, that really stood out to me is Bluffton, they're a running team, right? They, well, their most success the playoffs, is, yeah. when, is, they, is yeah. when they run. They have, they have three guys that do most of, of the carrying. 374 last week against Ottawa Hills. Right. They're not going to the air. They're, they're staying on the ground. Okay. 
Now, Patrick Henry not giving up a lot of rush yards. So it's a strength against a strength. And I, I, I kind of love those matchups. I don't I think that this matchup favors Bluffton. i my faith seems to be in renewed in the Bluffton Pirates after last week. Because I gotta be honest. You've been I, talking I, I Evan, thought, haven't you? No, I haven't <laughs> <clears throat> I, I did not expect Bluffton to get past Ottawa Hills. I thought that the offensive power of Ottawa Hills was right. gonna be too much. I, I especially Bluffton had just seemed kind of off. You know, they, they, yes, they had been winning. The defense had been holding it, but they just didn't has to have that same feel that we had gotten from them from during the regular season up until that Columbus Grove game. But and I, I expected the run to end last week against Ottawa Hills, but it anything but. I mean, that offense came alive. The defense did give up some points to a very high powered offense from Ottawa Hills, but only twenty two to a team that was averaging over forty a game. They they were do they did a fantastic job. I think I'm back on this Bluffton team. I, 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 I think yeah. that Bluffton has He's back on the ship. I, I do. I, I I really do. Bluffton I think. Blank. Also, here's the thing. Bluffton's given up five rushing touchdowns all season. That's it. They are strong against the run. Patrick Henry, they run over 3,000 yards on the season yeah, as a team. Did, yeah. that, that's what they like to do. It's a, they they want to run. They want to put the ball on the ground. They want to pound you on the inside. Well, Bluffton is, is even stronger. Like I said, five rushing touchdowns on the season. That given up. That's it. If that defense can come to play and the offense has found their footing in the strength in that run game, I think the Pirates can get this one done. If Bluffton does win this one, I think Tate Gieske is going to have to outplay Lincoln Krieger. Tall task. I think so. Yeah, tall task. Well, guys, the uh, winner gets <laughs> – are you ready for this? The winner gets Anna Coldwater, and it is game four at Sydney. Our own Mark Shine and Diamond Dave Bowen on the call for that one. These squads played on September 13th. Coldwater wins this one, 34-18. Different Anna club. Anna playing really good football right now. Hey, the monster on the east side of the state is Kirtland. That's who everybody has to go through. Coldwater knows that. Anna knows that. Bluffton knows that. They're the men. But right now, it's Anna Coldwater. Has there been a more understated team in this area than Anna? No. Anna has gotten absolutely lost in the shuffle because of – they have three losses. You, at times when you look at the record, at one point they were like four look and three. Two, though. But their, their yeah. losses were to Minster, Coldwater, and Marion Local. <laughs> like, right. There's no shame in those Better losses. Better than the AFC North. And then <laughs> – <laughs> and then you know, and then the, but then they've been pretty much dominating everybody else. This is a really good Anna team, as you mentioned. Not the same team that played Coldwater earlier. I, I still think that Coldwater is you know is and should be the favorite in, in this one. I think so too. But I, I do think that Anna poses a much bigger threat to them than they did six weeks ago. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on many points there. Um, last week, Coldwater fifty-six to nothing. Mason Welch, uh, the all unbelievable receiver in DB. Uh, what did he do yesterday or last week? Uh, I, I'll throw a TD pass as well. You, so, you can't squeeze Welch at all. Mm, no, 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 no. He no, is no. a heck of a football player, I tell you that. He's great. I mean, great. <laughs> is Coldwater going to score over 30 points? Absolutely. Now you look at Anna, okay? I don't know if they're going to score over 30 points against no. Coldwater. Coldwater does a great job with their blitz packages. Will Anna be able to pick those up? Will Alex Shappy be able to make the right decision when they do blitz? Don't know. If he does, they stay in the football game. If they don't, they have no chance. And then you look at the defense for Anna, their defensive backs, nice group. Can they stand up to Braylon, uh, Braylon Blackberger throwing the football? I don't know. I don't think they can. I think Coldwater wins this one. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. I think Coldwater is on a collision course with Kirtland. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say it. Now, if they play Patrick Henry or Bluffton, that could be a great game too. I don't think either of those teams can beat Coldwater. No, I just I think either. Coldwater's no. next level, and I think you're going to see a Coldwater-Kirtland state final. Let me, let me ask you real quick before we go move on. The, this Coldwater run that they're let, – let's just assume. There's still games to play, and I don't, you don't want to put the car before the horse. But let's just assume that they make that state final. They play Kirkland. They win. They're Division Six state champions. If you're that cold water team, how do you feel about that, knowing that you still weren't able to get over that Marion local team? State Does that bother you? No, not at all. I carry that trophy That's around right, going, yeah. well, woo! Because there's going to be two and, and, and normally, and I'm not saying that you guys are wrong at all. The, the only thought that I have when it comes to that is, you guys know as well as, as all of us, Things are just different in Mac country, oh, yeah. sure, and, sure. and those and those games and those that that's Ohio State, Michigan, 
right? It is, it is. Uh, on a, almost a bigger level to a lot of those people bigger over 50, there. Bigger 50 <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, we've talked as Ohio State fans at times is, well, if we lose to Michigan and win a national title, does the feel – like, we're great, we're still national champs, but do we still have that same sense of accomplishment well, as, as a fan base watching? It could have happened. Do you, do you when, feel uh, like that – do you guys think that maybe that's still – that that's kind of the same thing no, that maybe I, goes on in those communities? I think happens. I think that uh, Chip Otten and Coldwater's coaches, after that Marion local game, said, look, you want to salvage this season, you want to do great things, you want to be talked about in this city for the rest of your lives, let's go win a state title. we got to put that behind us. That is maybe, maybe the best team the Max ever – produced yeah. you lost to him might by be a, the, uh, one of the best teams that's ever, ever come out of the state ever. so in 20 years when the kid's looking up and says daddy what'd you guys do your senior year we won the state title right. how'd you do against marion local it doesn't matter we won the state we title and it really and, doesn't matter and you know how about having a program where you know a knucklehead like me can say hey you know do you think winning a state championship might yeah. not be the most successful well, thing because yeah, right, that's right. that's the standard yeah. that they've done over there where yeah. you know maybe you can even have that conversation a little bit and it'd be realistic it's great because he says salvage a season at nine and one right yeah. <laughs> right but exactly. that's the standard. Yeah. 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 Guys, are you surprised by anything in the playoffs so far this year? Uh, I'm just going to say that obviously we've talked about it a bunch. Delphi St. John's, Lipsick, really, really surprised me. Not that I didn't think they were capable, but when you looked about week three and four, you're thinking, Delphi St. John's, you're in real trouble. They were at the bottom of the back. Here they are playing for a regional title. Yeah, so for me, it's kind of almost in the same vein, but it's the opposite view. And we've talked about it. I know, you know, Miles, you and I have talked about it a bunch, but the biggest surprise that I've seen this year is people that are surprised about the lower seeds winning games and making runs. I, I'm I don't, not so surprised about that. I, well, I know, yeah. but there's a lot of people like, well, yeah. you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14 winning games. Like, th- that shouldn't come as a shock. Now, some places it's very top and bottom. It's very different, right? It's very top heavy. But, you know, a lot of these regions are not like that. No. Not every record is built the same. Not every conference is built the same. Delphi St. John's is proving that right now with people. I, I, I'm more shocked that there are people who are surprised by these lower seeds winning games and making runs. Do you think it's people that have had that old mindset where yes. the playoffs, everybody was a great football team back yeah. then, right? Yeah. And so now they're surprised that, because you know, in the old days, a four would never beat a one kind of right. thing. Yep. You know, because everybody was really good. And it does tend to thin out where we're at now when you look through. There's a lot of one, two, three, fours are the final fours. Sure. And I mean, sure. it does get there, but for the first two, three rounds, you saw a lot of upsets. There's a lot of eight seeds that are still still around. I mean, so I, I think that, yeah, I think it's that kind of that old school mentality. It's people who don't like change, people who don't like the expansion in general, who don't think that, you know. Old heads. Yeah. But also conference supremacy matters because you look at one conference and they'll put seven, eight teams in the playoffs and maybe number eight is a 15 seed and he's playing a team and we won't mention the conferences that's a one or a two seed in this league and maybe they got three or four. We cover them every week. We know that 15 is just as good as two because mm-hmm. of the competition they play. So, Who, yeah. I, that's a very specific example. I wonder, huh? I don't know. Okay. We, yeah. What are you people talking about? Yeah. What a, what a random hey, couple of numbers to pull out of your head. Let's talk about the Buckeyes. How about that? The good, the bad, the Buckeye. Miles, we'll start with you. Hey, how about the good? Number 11, <gasps> CJ Hicks. Oh, yeah. Finally, he's alive. Yeah. Well, I thought what, he was in the witness protection but program. What are they? You heard all these last, it seems like 10 years, right, before he came to Ohio State as a five star. All you heard was he's a great blitzer. He's a mm-hmm. great blitzer. And they haven't allowed him to do what he's great at, right? They do that a lot. He finally gets on the football field, and they, they release his ability to blitz, and he comes up with a – which should have been two sacks, but he got a sack and a half, right? He is a I sli- that. I know. <laughs> he's a slippery guy. If teams try to pick him up with a back, they're going to lose that matchup, as he showed against Northwestern on Saturday, because he is slippery. He knows how to navigate and get through those guys. Danny, if he could be a guy – to get what every Buckeye fan wants, right? Because all Buckeye fans, you can't have a great game defensively unless you get sacks, right? Have you ever seen a fan base more enamored with the sack totals than uh, Ohio State I'm fans? Guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. We, yeah, we didn't get any sacks. We got to get sacks. We shut them out. But it was only one sack. But we're so we're so told every year that Larry Johnson's bringing in this guy, bringing in this guy. He's yeah. really oh, developed yeah. this guy. Yeah. And then we watch spring practice and we're like, man, those are some big dudes. And then we go up against somebody else and we just like, yeah. We have to change our mindset on that because offensive coordinators have been so smart. I mean, nobody, the name of nobody the seven yeah. steps drops. Nope. Nobody pats the ball like Boomer size in, you know, for five seconds. It, yeah. It's 2.3 and we're getting rid of the football. So that makes it real difficult. But if CJ Hicks can be a part of this package blitzing, I think that's going to be a fantastic stuff for the Buckeyes moving forward. The, the bad, 
How about Mr. Dirty Ankle Turner for Bad Western? Oh, yeah. What in the world? You know what? WWE. The, you're it seeing was. that so often, though, that now. Like, and I, don't, I don't know if that's always just been a part and the cameras haven't picked it up, but that has to be about the third or fourth time this year where I have seen that thing happened not necessarily to ohio state but where the oh. defenders get it they take that extra twist i mean oh, there's some dirty fellas. stuff we've seen it before in columbus robert i'm gonna choke you out reynolds remember he, he was just massaging his throat <laughs> He had a sore throw. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. It was against the Soviets in Wisconsin. It's okay. <laughs> we right? lost that game, too. Yeah, I don't want to remember that. But the dirty Northwestern player, it was just an awful moment, right? That's one of those things that I've coached football, I played football. It's not something that a young man just comes up with on his own. That, that's something that is talked about in rooms and ways to get guys out of football games. Now, could you imagine? If Jeremiah Smith was out for the rest of the year because oh, no. some punk Shut your kid, mouth. some, some <laughs> Shut punk up. is twisted on his ankle. Yeah. Now the officials should have got there a little bit quicker so that stuff doesn't happen. Um, and, and the Buckeye for me, Jack Sawyer, absolutely loved the guy. He was a blur he everywhere a uh, on the field. And, well, that was two weeks ago. And, he and uh, the, the lovely Lexi Holiday, she's always <laughs> confused. Why is Devin Brown playing on defense too, sweetie? No, it is. Not Devin Brown. We wouldn't. We don't Sawyer. put Devin Brown on offense. We're not putting him on defense. <laughs> uh, you know, for me, the good is not. It, it's a little different. And so, I, I like I talked earlier in the show. I I was down in Cincinnati at a game day visit, so I didn't really get to watch the game like I would have liked to. Because if we didn't have the game day visit, my intent was to be there just like you two were. Oh, oh. Um, it, you know, I, there were still some pretty good tickets up even on day of. Where... Could have used our seat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, for for me, it was the good was the home field advantage at Wrigley Field. Oh, it was pretty Ridiculous. cool. Crazy. I mean, when I, I'm watching it on my phone and I have the volume down, and you know, the, on the game day visit, you know, when the defense is out there. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, he it was red. It was a seer. He, he don't he don't play defense. So, so I'm watching it. So I don't have any I don't have any volume. I'm just watching it, and so I don't I don't really have a lot of context for what I'm seeing. But all I'm seeing is red. Yeah. No matter where the camera went, no matter how it panned, all I am seeing red. The Ohio State faithful, they came out. It w- it was a home game at Wrigley Field for Ohio State. It, one of the coolest things though, and I don't know if you saw it on social media or not. But my, my good friend Danny here, he, he was an honorary mo- member of the Northwestern Band. I did see that. How did you guys talk <laughs> them into that? So Miles and I, we, we see him. So we're, we're making our rounds around Wrigley, and we go to the back side. We come off of Waveland, and we're going down the side street to go back to the front. And the Northwestern Band is like in an alley back there. I don't know what yeah. they're doing back there. Yeah. So we walk up. We're like, hey, Northwestern. Of course, Miles and I are being smart, Alex. And we're like, hey, you guys want to get some pictures with us? And the kid says, the only way we get pictures is if you do the – Northwestern paw. They put their paw up in the air for the Wildcats. And I'm like, and I'm thinking, it was scary. Okay, I'm going to do this because I know what I'm going to do. So I put my paw up. He takes the pictures, which will be deleted. Never, never yeah. see it. And I look at them and I go, all right, guys, it's time to spell Ohio. And the one girl's like, oh, we can't do that. No, no. The other kid goes, well, I'm from Ohio. That's not a bad thing. And I go, no, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. No one will mind. So we get, they did it. And it was, uh, and I laughed so hard because you I'm probably thinking, got him kicked off. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, on yeah, Sunday. Sorry, <laughs> Miles, did you put it on social media? I said, done. <laughs> <laughs> Those poor kids. I love how you ask them, hey, do you guys want to get pictures with us? Yeah. Like, 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 do you not know who I am? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Well, they, well, the one girl's like, are you from WS? Like, yeah, I yeah, know what it is. Yeah. Sure, creepy old guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, so for me, the bad. Uh, the sluggish starts that these team that this team is doing. This is starting to become. It just is that thing, isn't like, it? It's yeah. just, like this is now seems to be who they are. They they. It's a big concern because you're supposed to – you're running scripted plays. You're, this is the thing that you should be the most prepared for. And every week, no matter who the opponent is, we come out and we are just not ready. It is not there. Whether it's play selection, whether it's execution, no matter – it is It is not it, – it's frustrating to watch. Looking – you know, t- tuning in, like I said, like I wasn't able to watch – so as I first time I was able to turn it on, it was towards the end of the first quarter, and it's seven nothing, and that's it. Now we're into the second quarter. Yeah, only it's only one drive seven nothing, yeah. and it's like like time. what is what is happening? And it it's starting to be a problem right. in, in my in my opinion. Now, who do you blame for that? I know who I blame. 
And that's Will Howard. Of course you do. <laughs> no. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> no. Howard, you know, you listen, listen, yeah. Will Howard gets a reprieve this week, mainly because I didn't get to watch the game like I would have. So I don't have as much bad stuff to say about Will Howard. And from everything I read when I was trying to, you know, hit the recaps, I, it sounds like he played pretty um, well. In he three did. weeks, when he gets an invite to New York and we're the number one team in the country after we win the Big Ten championship against Oregon, are you going to say I was wrong? I will say that the worst Heisman Trophy winner ever <laughs> just won. <laughs> How about the Buckeye? So for me, the Buckeye is Carnell Tate, and I think that's yeah, a little bit cool. that's a little bit of a cheap way out. But listen, <laughs> no, it's you, a know, good way. you know, you know, it, it was a big game for that young man. He, he he went home. He had two touchdowns. Doesn't have a bunch of yardage. I think just a little over fifty. Um, four catches, maybe fifty-two yards, something like that. I saw, but he had two touchdowns. It's a homecoming game for him. Everybody in the program was talking about it. They all knew that this was a big spot for him. And you know, he could have came out. And he could have had a bunch of jitters and, you know, but he seemed to be embracing that moment. And I think even if you're, if you're a Chicago area kid, not just going back to Northwestern, right? You get to go to Wrigley field. You get to go to one of the iconic places that of your city and get to play a game. That was really cool to see. That was a great story. I was glad to see that he was able to get in the end zone a couple of times too. Absolutely. For me, the good, and I have the same three answers you have, just in a different order. Is that wild? And we never talked about you this. You hate Will Howard? No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. you do. The good for me was Carnell Tate. Really super proud of that kid, and you're absolutely right. It would have been cool if they'd have let him play on Wrigley Field, but they didn't want real good teams to play there. So uh, we went to Wrigley. Yeah. Um, but Miles and I drove by uh, Soldier Field, and it was empty, and we thought, this would be a nice place to have 70,000 fans. Right, you know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. But they didn't. Yeah. Um, but Carnell Tate was fabulous. You know, he's been through a lot, and uh, we've talked about that, you know, losing his mom and just to go home. And, look, he's going to play in the NFL. He's, yeah. he's, he's a great – he's the best third receiver in the country. I'm just going to say it right now. Mm-hmm. And if, if we ever have anybody go down, I'm not worried at all because Carnell Tate will step up, and him and Brandon Ennis are just fabulous, and uh, Brian Hartline does a great job with them. Uh, for me, again, the bad is the slow start, down 7 to nothing, And you put doubt in, in, in the minds – look, Indiana, if they get up 7 to nothing, they're going to be super excited, right? <laughs> And here's the other thing. You do you go down seven or nothing to Michigan and they believe they got a shot. We've seen in our lifetime better Buckeye teams get beat Duh. than this. Yep. Uh. The, the Bobby Hoying, Ricky Dudley, Eddie George team uh. that got just absolutely waxed was the best team in the country, and we got mm-hmm. shut out. Yeah. We got shut out. Yeah. So you yeah. you cannot start slow this week and next week. And I'm talking about you can't go down three nothing, seven. You you've got to go out, you've got to slap them in the first possession and let them know what's happening the rest of the day. Absolutely. Um, for me, the good uh, or the Buckeye is Will Howard. Love the kid. I'm telling you, I love the way he puts the ball in the receiver's hands. He's always composed. Yes. Uh, I was just gonna say, Nate. Deep balls completed yes uh, last Saturday. What, well, it's what, smaller field during Wrigley. It's bad. <laughs> That's a great yeah, line. You're playing in a baseball stadium. Oh, yeah. Things are different there. It was it, it was easier. Gene Hackman it was took a tape measure out there. He took a tape measure out there, and he said, boys, let's measure this Same field. Same measurements <laughs> as the shoes. Yeah. Um, so – for me, it's Will Howard. I love him. I, I think he's the perfect fit. He's just getting better and better and better. He's the kind of kid that's not going to flinch this weekend, and I can't wait to see him against Michigan in two weeks. Indiana, overrated, and I'm just going to say this. I'm going to say this. Do it. This is a team, and this isn't popular because they're the darlings of the media right now. Oh, man. They, are you so tired of hearing about yeah, Indiana or what? Listen to this. They have played the bottom five teams in the Big Ten. Yeah. You realize that. Yes. Yep. Yeah, they haven't beat anybody. Tell me their biggest win. No, wait, they oh. beat Nebraska. It's, it's, it's Michigan. Nebraska. It's Michigan is their biggest win, yeah. and they had to scrape to do that at home. 15-10. Okay? Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm calling it right here on the Three Wise Men podcast, the Buckeyes roll by three touchdowns Saturday. Well, I, I would hope so. I, I mean, you, if we're going to be the team that we've been told we're, we are all season, you have to. Like, right, right. You, you can't not win by less than three scores at this point. Indiana has – the thing that makes Indiana dangerous is they have absolutely nothing to lose. Yeah. If you lose this game, nobody's going to look at you differently, right? You're, oh, you're Indiana. You didn't play anybody. No big deal. There's a chance that they may still make the playoffs even if they lose this game playing a horrible schedule. But if they win, all of a sudden, Indiana's the real deal, right? This is their resume building. So they have nothing to lose, everything to gain. That makes a team dangerous. Ohio State has to come out right from the beginning take away any notion that they have that they 
deserve to be on the same field with them, and they have to roll by three touch by three scores or more. Not winning a national title if if we lose to Indiana. Nope. Right. We're not worthy nope. of winning a national I title. I 100 percent agree with you. Yeah, because when you you stack the two rosters and you look at Indiana's talent, and I know he brought a lot of those blue chippers from James Madison with him. Um, but there's not guys on that Indiana roster that Ohio State coaches like, man, I can't believe we lost that kid to Indiana, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're stacking up the two rosters, you're like, I really like Ohio State's roster. You look at the two coaching staffs, right? I know everybody loves Kurt Spaghetti. Um, but when you look at the two coaching staffs, and you're going to pick which coaching staff. Well, don't you think most people are going to say, I really like Ohio State's coaching yep. staff over Indiana's, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I don't see how Indiana wins, right? They, all the advantages, we're playing at home. Uh, Indiana's had two weeks, which I think is a detriment. I do too. Because now those kids have talked all two weeks about this is the biggest game of our lives. We got to beat Ohio State, right? And that builds, man, Mm -hmm. and that tension builds. I I think that's a bad thing. Did you see how emotional their coach was after their last one that put them at 10 and 0? I mean, if that game is making you that emotional, because there's nothing wrong with being emotional after wins. That's what this is what sports does. This is why we love sports. It makes you. But if that win makes you that emotional, that moment, everything going into that weighed on you that much where when it's over, yeah. there's that release, right, that we saw. How are you then going to – like, what is this Ohio State game doing to you Exactly. Yeah. And so I feel like the moment will be too big. It's not a big deal. Indiana's – you know what? The Big Ten needs another good game, another good team. No issues with the up and coming. And if he's that good of a coach, he's not going to be there that long anyway. Someone else will Eight snatch him up. extension, which you – know, It don't mean anything wonder, in college football not, anymore. You wonder, That's yeah, just the not, buyout at this point. He's not going to be there in two years. No. But here, here's the thing. If Ohio State – Loses right. We they're not winning national title. All these other things. Well, they still but make the they're still gonna make. Well, the I know, yeah, but yeah. It, I'll say this: does, if, if they lose, is Ryan Day gone? No, 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 no. no, no. no. But here's what's gonna happen: if they lose, they're still gonna beat Michigan. They're still gonna get the college playoffs. Right. I'll say this: right. if Indiana loses and they lose big, they're done. They're out of the playoffs yeah, because I, of their they're schedule. not ranked real high. No. Yeah. There's so many things that I think would have to be questioned if Ohio State loses to Indiana. Well, if you, you just look, you just lot. talk about the the talent for talent coaching stuff, all these other things. Indiana has no NIL money really coming through there. You know, you're talking about a payroll now from Ohio State. It is. Dude, all these things that we were told. If if Ohio State can't beat Indiana. I, there has to be there has to be changes uh, there has to be but just keep in mind it's not happening the, very reminiscent guys you remember was it three years ago mel tucker oh, and yeah, michigan state, state yeah. came yeah. in and yeah. they were top five team and next thing you know it's 56 nothing a half right yeah i think this is very reminiscent of that now danny you have some inside information because uh spencer holbrook your nephew um everybody knows about the offensive line issues yesterday uh awful with mclaughlin yeah. getting hurt um is it going to be Padilla? Or are they going to move Hinsman over? I, I, I'm leaning towards I hope they go with Padilla because I really like that left side of the offensive line right now. I think they're going to bring Padilla in. Padilla's been taking second-string snaps all year long. Yeah. Uh, they Look, <laughs> Seth McLaughlin is as tough as they come. It's a, it's a tragic thing. But I don't – look, they've, they've went four weeks with this new line. Yeah. And we've all went – we've good. all said, wow, that line. And we've all went, the left side is really good. It was good with Josh Simmons. It's really good with Donovan Jackson over there. He's very Carson athletic. Heinzman. Yeah. I think you can get away with bringing Padilla in. I really do. I think the majority of the runs are going to go to the left side, which I don't have any issues with that. And I also think you're going to see a package where Will Howard runs a lot more this week. Oh, absolutely. I really do. Yeah. So, yeah, I think Padilla is going to start, and we're going to keep he the is, line. He's gotten in the last two weeks uh, in second-team reps. Yeah. Um, I went back and watched the second half where he got in. Um, pretty good at getting to the second level for linebackers. Um, he is a guy that they drafted to be – or not drafted, but uh, <laughs> signed to be a center only. Uh, former wrestling champion in the state of Ohio. I, I, I like his makeup. I think we'll yeah. be just fine. Yeah, I said earlier in the day that the three best linemen at the beginning of this year for Ohio State were Josh Simmons, uh, McLaughlin, and uh, Donovan Jackson. We've lost two out of three, which is unbelievable. Unbelievable. If, mm-hmm. if we go on and do what we think we can do, um, we all need to say Justin Fry did a good job. Yep, right. Yep. 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 right. And, he, and, and that been, is not a statement. Right. That right. is not a statement we thought we'd say no. three, four no. weeks ago. Yeah. All right, guys, let's change sports and go to Buckeye basketball. This team is currently three and one. What will their record be at the end of November? And what do you guys like about this team, Miles? I, I, I'm going to have them at six and one. Uh, they're going to. Um, uh, 
scoop uh, Campbell's soup up with a victory uh, this yeah. weekend. Uh, <laughs> Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers isn't there anymore. Brett I Favre. Think they get a win there. Don Mikowski. The, the one, though, Danny, is going to be tough is uh, Pittsburgh, who's playing really good, it's a good program. basketball. Yeah. Um, they they have Pittsburgh has Louisville this weekend. They're five and zero. Um, they're going to play that next Friday before the Ohio State Michigan game at a two thirty start. I know I'm super excited. With, yeah, yeah, it's really it's going to yeah. be a cool game. Pittsburgh's a program that's on the move. I, I think uh, you get that after Thanksgiving momentum, the excitement before Michigan. I think they find a way to win that one. I think they'll be six and one. What about you? Yeah, I think they're going to be six and one. Exactly. I, I saw that schedule with Campbell, Green Bay, and Pittsburgh. Look, we said it last week. That loss at Texas A&M is not a bad loss. No. Now, the problem is, and we've talked about it on this podcast before, we got to see some interior points. I'm really concerned last night. Bradshaw did not play super great last night. Uh, but I, I, I need I need out of him, I need 12 and 7, 12 and 10 every night. It's like he's you know? still trying to figure out what kind of player he is. Right, exactly. Stop shooting. The three. Okay, just stop it. Jake Diebler, I know it's a new day. It's a new age. Put him under the basket. Make him post up. Now, the problem is, is he's not real big. When I say big, I'm talking bulk-wise. He's 7'1". He's athletic as heck. Get up and down the court. Defense, he can defend the rim all day. But I wish he was in Austin Parks' body and they could change a little bit, but yeah. it's not there. So I, I agree with you. I think I think six and one. I think that they'll be fine in November. I, I think They'll honestly be fine until that um, mid-December matchup with Auburn, and then they got Kentucky uh, two games after that. If Auburn can fly there. Yeah, they fight a lot on the planes. You don't know what he's talking about. I have no idea. Oh, you didn't hear this? They had to turn a, a, a flight around because the team got in a, on a team <laughs> charter. Fist fight, fight. Fist fight. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And then they went and beat uh, who they beat. They beat the, uh, yeah. So the but guy that started to fight, though, the next game, he just, he'd run down on offense, and they'd just look at him. They wouldn't pass him That's the ball. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, so I think Ohio State will be fine up until that. I think that's when we will get our next real look to measuring stick as far as where's this team at with Jake Diebler and, and how things are going. You know, it's so hard early when you when you talk about any of these teams. Now, I do like that they try to challenge themselves early. They had Texas right away. We talked about the Texas A&M game. You know, I even said if they lose that game, nobody should – I felt like them getting jumped into the top 25 was really premature. I felt like that was more on the backs of how the pundits saw Texas more than how they saw Ohio State. Yeah, in the way Ohio State finished last year. And so I felt like that was a premature ranking. If Losing to Texas A&M really doesn't bother me. Um, there's still going to be a lot that they have to work through. And it's just really hard to get a handle on how a team's going to look when you're playing teams like Evansville and yeah. Campbell. I still think and it's all a, these. I still teams. think it's a 22, 23 team win. I do too. I think it's I a top five it Big be. Ten team. Um, I, I think with uh, Purdue losing some key pieces, uh, I'm not real sure what Indiana is going to be, but I think we can finish in the top five. Yeah, well, and I said I think we'll find out. I think mid December, yeah. they got two out of three games are really difficult with Auburn and Kentucky right there. I think we're going to see what kind of team we have. Now we've also been fooled before. We watch Ohio State knock off Duke or Kentucky early in the season. Like, ooh, this is going to be good. And then January comes. But For me, I know it's a new – yeah, Well, we and I understand that, that but they're still going to be – After year, Until I see some January we, wins, I'm going to be a little nervous. After, yeah. Yeah. after year four and five, and we're all going, well, this is a really good team. And then after year and four and five, we start seeing that pattern of every time we get to January, you're seeing seven, eight, nine losses in a row. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see it with this crew. I, I agree I with you, yeah. but I do think that we're all going to be a little leery going into January when this team – only has, you know, one, two, three losses, and you're like, okay, here comes January. We have thought we played pretty good. Let's see what happens. You know what I like about this team? I like the fact that Devin Royal led us in scoring last night. Yeah. Had a really big time game. You got to see a lot scores of guys. He scores easy, doesn't he? He scores really easy. Yeah. He reminds me of a better athletic EJ Liddell. EJ Liddell was really robotic at times. He Devin was. Royal's smooth. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I like the fact that he led us in scoring because he's not starting. He's coming off the bench, yeah. you know? And uh, hey, we got Sierra and Colin White That's right. put in a couple last Listen, night. Listen, anytime awesome. that they they get to empty the bench like that. Yeah. It's never. It's never a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, how about was it uh, Laquitten Ross? You remember him? Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, I, he reminds me of him yeah. like that. Hopefully, he doesn't leave early. Danny, I, I, I have to ask you though. Okay, Jake Diebler, we know he loves to run. Yes, he does. Push tempo, loves to shoot the three. Mm -hmm. Maybe this 
feeding the post is just something that they don't really like to do. That's not part of what their makeup is. Well, I think what they like to do is they like to get the bigs in transition. I, yeah. I don't think you're ever going to see an established set play where we run a, a motion offense where we get a guy coming off yeah. the back screen right. calling for the ball on the block. It's not right. going to happen. They're right. going to get him in transition, and they're going to tell Bradshaw and Parks, look, you're going to rebound, you're going to put the ball back up. We're not running set plays for a bit. Yeah, we're, we're not going to yeah. have Greg Oden – put his back on the low block. He's the last great post player we had. Yeah, so yeah. I, don't, I, don't I don't know if we're, we're going to see that out of Brad I just Shaw. I just feel like, and this could be more, and I hate saying old school mentality. Are you going to cut him one hour? Because he didn't play back. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, fall. It just, wait, the Big Ten has a reputation for physical, tough basketball, right? They just do. Yeah, and, and it always hurts and, them in the tournament. And if you can't establish offense on the inside, you're, it always feels like you're going to be a little bit behind. the. Now, there isn't a Zach Eady in the conference this Thank year, God. right? Like you, You're not going to have to deal with that. But Ohio State is going to have to find a way to at least – be able to be a threat, right? Or at least give them something to think about on the inside. If you can't, and I felt like, and I don't know if Austin Parks is ready to do that now, but he is built like somebody that can play on the inside. He's a physical dude. And you have other bigs. You're going to have to do something to at least flash down there to give the defense something to Two think about. Two guys in the tournament last year that played in the finals, both of them 7-4, 7-2. They took their teams to the national championship game, and you look at both of them. The, here's the thing. Coached a lot of years of basketball. You have to have re, to win in the tournament. You have to have great guard play, and you have to have a guy on the well that you can put the ball on the block and know that you're getting two points. There's a lot of times you're coming out of timeout. You have to have a bucket. We don't have that yet, and that's got me concerned. Yeah. I, I think we can get it. I think I think it's going to take some time, but we've got to have a guy that can sit on the block and score it's the ball. It's just such a lost art. It is. Oh, very much so. Um, we ain't got Alonzo Morning. <laughs> go back to when we were down there at Ohio State when they upset Purdue, right? Mm -hmm. What did Matt Painter forget to do? Put the ball in his yeah, hands. Yeah, exactly, yeah. and that's how, how Ohio State won yeah. that game. All right, guys, of the teams who have been eliminated so far in the OHSA football tournament, who makes the deep run next year? Who's the team we're going to be talking about a year from now? Nate, why don't you go first? You know, I, I I guarantee I'm stealing Danny's and I'm gonna get a good chuckle out of it, but I think it's gonna be Lipsick. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, it, 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 that that they kind of came out of nowhere. They really flew under the radar. They were sure they were an 11 seed, but we you know we've talked a lot about the quarterback situation over at Lipsick, and you know we had they had a freshman starting at quarterback. We're just now finding out he's been playing with a pretty severe injury over the yeah. last five weeks and still playing at a high level. It, when, it is such a benefit when you can have and the coaches, kids, and all these things at the most important position on the field. You give him a year of growth, he gets to be healthy. This Lipsick team really has the makings of a team that can take a huge leap next year. Yeah, they, they're going to return a lot of guys. Uh, Marquise Williams, keep an eye on that name. He wore number 14, played in the secondary for him this year. Uh, Coach Kirkendall said, if we can get his hands better, he's going to be a dynamic player. He he looks like George Pickens right now. He's going to be a really good one. I, I have LCC, and I'll tell you why. I love toughness. You guys know I love mm -hmm. toughness, right? Falky, Quatman return, Michael Quatman is, Carter Lester, Eddie White, Don McKee. Oh, physical McKee's dudes, really right? Good, yeah. And then you get Brady Parker back, who He's is a physical <laughs> dude also, right? Mm -hmm. People would knew that you were going to run quarterback lead, and it didn't matter. You he was can put still that getting Brady him. Parker in that list of quarterbacks you asked me yeah. about earlier. Yeah. 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 The thing yeah. with LCC is they are, they are going to be so young next year. They, you know, they're going to have a lot of guys at the skill position. You're going to have two, fr or two sophomores next year, and Eddie White and Carter yeah. Lester in that backfield, along with another sophomore quarterback in you know, uh, Brady Parker. Michael so he'll Quatman. Be a junior next year. Yeah, you're right. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, he'll be a junior. Michael Quatman will be one of those elder statement statements right. there, right? As right. a junior, um, he's played a lot of minutes. There's just going to be a lot of youth on that team. So that always makes you a little bit nervous, but they're going to but be. They're still going youth, to. Though. Yes, and they're yeah. going to be talented. Right. And those guys, those young guys, got a lot of reps this year they because did. of injuries to to Matthew Quatman specifically. He's going to be a big loss, right? But that he's kind of ushering out that that wave of um, players that made LCC so good over the last three or four years, right. he's kind of that last guy to go. And now th this is going to be a whole new team, a whole new makeup with a lot of guys who've gotten a lot of minutes. The The line went from two uh, last year being all freshmen on both sides, essentially, and sophomores just a little bit of growth. Now you got three years of essentially – 
all guys who have started on both sides of the line. That makes them – it's a great pick, Miles. It really is. Yeah. Um, uh, another name, Jackson White, receiver, number 11. He has fantastic hands. I, I really like them next year. Yeah. Maybe we can get him to play Lipsick. <laughs> <laughs> For me, guys, there's two schools, obviously. Lipsick, uh, Mark Kirkin, I love that kid. I think they have a great coaching staff. They're so good everywhere, and they're so young. And the other team for me is Versailles. Guys, Versailles has been at the top of the mountain, and they had to watch everybody step over top of them uh, this that's year. A great point. I'm telling you right now, they put 60 kids on that squad every year. They're not going to take a back seat. They got too much pride. That's a really good program. Wait and see next year and the year after if Versailles doesn't bounce back. Yeah, I, Versailles, for me, the big thing is just when was the last time that they went through a stretch like they exactly. did this year? Yeah. I mean, they lost six in a row. And I, when was the last time Versailles lost six straight games and didn't move on beyond the first round of the playoffs? I mean, this is a team coming off a state, uh, semi, or a state final appearance. Yeah, I, soul you, searching. Yeah, I mean that you you and I would agree with you. I mean the history says that you're going to get a very much more focus for yeah. sales Tigers team next year, and that could be dangerous. Yep. Guys, no show next weekend. We're going to spend some time with our families go, for go. Thanksgiving. That's, That's right. right. You have been listening to the Three Wise Men.